Go open up the door so we can talk to you. What we are worried about is you having juvenile in there. Would you be interested in sexual stuff? He starts calling this guy daddy. He says, hurry up, daddy. I'm super. I'm going to be like a good little boy. And we've got a witness that puts you there. When you say, I absolutely picked him up. The man sitting in a pristine black suit looking quite nervous is Ralph Allen Lee Shorty. He was born on February 16, 1982, and served two terms as a member of the Republican Party in the Oklahoma Senate, being elected in 2010 and 2014. He was the state campaign chair for Donald Trump in his 2016 presidential election, and was generally a well-respected man. However, his political career took a very unexpected turn in 2017, when an extremely dark side of him was revealed to the public. First off, let me start off saying that I've got a little bit of a blood pressure issue. Okay. So, just if I get a little lightheaded, let me know. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, let us know. Do you have a glass of water or anything? No, I'm fine. Um, um, first off, you can go anytime you want. You can stop talking to us anytime you want. No big deal. Just say, hey, done talking. And we're going to talk, okay? And we'll let you. And we'll let you out. Let us know if you have any blindness, okay. or anything like that. It's important to note that at the time of this interrogation, Shorty was not actually under arrest. That becomes clear from the interrogator saying that he's free to go anytime he wants, and how he's free to stop speaking at any time he wants. This seems a bit informal and leads to a couple questions on how he actually ended up in this situation. Did he volunteer to give information? Was he brought in by the police in some way other than being arrested? Either way, it's a deviation from the norm in terms of what usually happens in high-profile interrogations like these. Alright, <clears throat> well I'd like to tell you on the phone. Yeah. I guess, uh, had some officer contact you at Super 8, um, on, uh, March the 9th, I think it was, real early in the morning. Yeah, And, uh, so, that's what we're here to talk about, why don't you tell me what, what transpired there? Well, we were, uh... Uh, inside talking and uh, you know we heard a bang on the door I honestly didn't know who it was couldn't see through the keyhole or the the peep hole and so um, you know the, uh, the young man I was with I know has um, you know I've known him for we've been talking he's come to the coffee shop that I operate a couple times uh, shoot, I've even had one my house, play video games before. As you just heard, Shorty brings up the fact that he was with a young man, very specifically, a child, who had come over to his house before to play video games. Of course, this could be entirely innocent, and a case of something like a father figure. Many among you, however, will surely feel something strange about the operator of a coffee shop bringing a client back to his house to play video games. And without giving too much away, you're right to be wary of this man. Um, had no idea, told me when I first met him that he was 20. And uh, so when they first got there, I, I didn't know what, what the issue was. Um, you know, uh, didn't know if it was you know, somebody trying to get in or what. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I asked them, it was somebody that said it was a wellness check or something like that, and I said, hey, I'm fine. And um, they uh, they were persistent. And then I could finally see a badge, one of them. And then they said that there was a minor inside the room. Um, obviously, I had no idea when I first met this young man. He told me he was 20 years old. Um, like I said, we've been talking on the phone for a while. He, in fact, for a few months, he even told me that he went to California to try to get in the music industry or something. Um, so that was when I opened the door. It was, I mean, it just didn't make any sense to me why, you know, there'd be a, you know. Police there. Actually, what I asked him was, I said, are you minor? And he said, no, let me go talk to them. And I said, okay. The person that Shorty was with had, according to him, claimed to be 20 years old. And if this is the truth, then there is very little wrong with the whole situation. Two adults, albeit one much younger than the other, hanging out with each other is not a big issue. But if Shorty is lying, or if he coerced the other person into lying, well, then we start to see some pretty glaring issues going on. And um, he went out there and that's, you know, I... I don't know what they talked about, but um, I asked them to check his ID. So again, I've never, never even thought to ask them for, for his ID. There's no reason to. 
Um, so anyway, um, I guess after that, um, um, one of the men, uh, Sergeant something, I can't remember his last name, he's he bald. Um, he lectured me quite a deal. At that point, I, I was, you know, again, blood pressure. Um, I had to sit down, couldn't, couldn't even really, I don't even honestly remember what I said to him, um, a little bit, I think. And uh, I just needed to, to not have a stroke. Um, so I was caught off guard by that. I think they asked me at some point if they could search the, um, the room. I had my computer bag with me and one of the men searched my computer bag as well as the room. Um, as far as I know, there was nothing found. Uh, so um, that was that. Okay. I, so they said they, <coughs> pardon me. They said they did not weed in the in the room. Did the, were y'all smoking weed or anything? I was not like smoking weed. Was there any in there? No. No. Okay. This part lays out a bit more information that allows the story to make more sense, and probably clues most of you in on what Shorty was attempting to do with this so said 20 year old. It's a fairly common ploy by some pretty awful people to lure in teenagers with an offer of weed or other drugs, get them in a position where it's difficult to say no to further drugs, and eventually they're in such a delirious state that they either black out or can't remember what happened when they sober up. Shorty very much claims that he and the boy were not smoking, but the officer claimed to smell weed. It's possible that the teenager had smoked before arriving, but as of right now, it seems like something fishy is definitely going on. Um. Yeah, again, I, let, I asked them to search. They, they wanted to search my bag. Um, so I don't remember. I think he, I mean, he, he... He knew the place to stay for the night. Mm -hmm. He had a bag with him. I don't know if they searched that. Okay. I did not. Um, so did you stay there all night after the cops left? Or? No, I left a, a little while later. Well, what about what time? I have no idea. Okay. I but you didn't stay until in the morning? I wanted to make sure that I was okay mm -hmm. to leave okay. um, at the next time. So you say you, how long you known the guy? It's been definitely over a year. Okay. What What do you know about what's his name? You know his last name? No. No. No, honestly, don't remember. He's been over my coffee shop a couple times. Um, he, uh, I know that he had been uh, arrested for drug dealing in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that he had dropped out of high school. Um, you know, he was trying to get a... Uh, a GED. Um, I was trying to help him through that. In fact, when we first met, I was trying to help him study and things like that for the GED. Um, and then when I lost contact with him for four or five months, when I guess when he went to California or wherever, um, I just assumed that he had, you know, I didn't know that's where he, where he went. Well, how did y'all meet? At the coffee shop. I'm, I'm pretty sure of, of that. Um, but what coffee shop are you on? That was my guy on the coffee shop. Oh, okay. on, it's called Holy Grounds Coffee. Okay. And uh, uh, 8613 Southwestern. Okay. It's difficult to judge a situation like this because the world has become so cynical and for a good reason. Sure, there are plenty of people who would genuinely love to help a young person get back onto their feet, get their GED and figure out life, exactly like what Shorty is suggesting. But because there are so many awful people in the world that instead take advantage of these people, it's difficult to really believe someone when they tell a story like this. And in this case, everyone is right to be skeptical. I'm pretty sure that's how we met. I honestly don't remember. Um, it's only place I probably would have met the guy. Um, so anyway, he, uh, he's been over a couple times there. Um, when he came back, you know, he... Uh, he was, well, in fact, he told me he wanted to go be an anesthesiologist or something. And I you said, know, so you got to get, you can't go without a high school diploma. You can't do anything without a high school diploma. And so, um, you know, I know that the day after the incident happened, he was going to test for the GED. I strongly encouraged him to do that. Um, and um, the night that uh, he called me, um, he said, you just need to get out of his house. Um, I'm assuming I have, I mean, I thought he had told me that he lived with some friends and, 
he had told me in the past that, you know, it was hard for him to get clean because he was always with his friends that, that are, you know, living with them. Um, and so, you know, um, when he called and said he needed to get out of there, you know, you know that he had to test the next day, then the choice was to bring him over to my house, which I don't think my wife would have appreciated that very much. Um, and she probably would have been okay with it, but I just, I just felt it would be easier just to get him a place. Um, and then we decided to talk. So. It's truly interesting that he brought up that his wife probably wouldn't have been okay with it. This is a kid that is in desperate need of help for what sounds like a few nights, just to get away from a bad situation. Shorty is, at this time, a senator. He's supposedly someone that cares deeply about people and wants to help them, and she married him for that. So why would she have a problem with offering a guest room or something to what sounds like a friend in need? It makes me wonder whether or not she had some intuition of what was going on. Um, um, how do you, when you, when you, do you text him or how do y'all communicate? Yeah, usually phone calls. Phone calls? Okay. Um, well, it's interesting because um, on his tablet, he has a conversation that he says he had, that he had with you using an app called Kick. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> there's a pretty lengthy conversation on his tablet that uh, he says is with a guy that is you, that he, um, <clears throat> that is the online, or the kick, kick ID is Jamie Tilly. Um, and you told officers that night that that's who, which was your online. He, he calls me Jamie. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure why. Okay. And um, anyways, so we've, we've got a conversation between him and this Jamie Tilly about, um, he says, I need money for spring break. Uh, Jamie Tilly says, I don't uh, really have any legitimate things I need help with right now. Would you be interested in sexual stuff? He says, yes. And here it is all laid out. First of all, if you're unfamiliar with Kick, then it's probably a blessing. In short, it was an anonymous messaging app that became quite popular among teens for a short while. And because of that, it eventually became sort of known to be a place where groomers like to hang out and message people. You could kind of compare this situation to Omegle. There have been countless cases of children being exploited by someone that they met on this app. Second, it's pretty shady to have a name on there that doesn't match at all with your real name. His full name is Ralph Allen Lee Shorty and his kick username was Jamie Tilly? It doesn't match at all, and his excuse of, he calls me Jamie, not sure why, doesn't really hold water. Why would he just let someone call him by a direct, obviously incorrect name, and furthermore, why would he make his kick profile that name? To me, it all screams exploitation, and there's a good reason for that impression. In particular, he admitted he solicited a minor identified as John Doe to engage in a commercial sex act on March 8th and 9th, 2017. As the interrogator just mentioned, he did so via the app Kick, and the conversations included some pretty direct references to explicit erotic acts that are too graphic to discuss here. All you need to know is that just after midnight on March 9th, Ralph Shorty drove Doe to a Super 8 motel in Moore, Oklahoma, where Shorty rented a room with his credit card and, keep in mind, using the money he made as a well-respected senator. Based on information provided by Doe's father, officers of the Moore Police Department knocked on the motel room door at approximately 1 a.m. and discovered Doe with Shorty, whose backpack contained an open box of condoms. This goes on about how I can get you, blah, blah, blah. Um, we go on. He says, uh, he starts calling this guy Daddy. He says, hurry up, Daddy. I'm super horny. This is all obviously quite disgusting, but it leads us to understand why exactly Shorty is here while not being under arrest. He was already arrested. He is voluntarily making this statement without a lawyer present after posting his $100,000 bond. Which is, well, it's not smart from a legal perspective, but I think that most of us can agree that we want someone like this put behind bars. It's important to note that he has not been sentenced yet, only arrested. His actual shocking sentencing will come later after this interrogation. If you keep calling me daddy, this goes on and on and on and on. Well then, 
it gets to the end and it says, <coughs> it says, okay, I'll be down the street, a couple houses in about 10 minutes or so. He says, okay, um, so I have, so I have, let me know so I have an idea. Then that person says, I-35 about the exit in four, at 4th four Street. And then it says, I'm here. Well, um, we've got a witness, <coughs> pardon me, we've got a witness that sees him get in a white Grand Cherokee, and they follow that white Grand Cherokee to the hotel, Super Royal First Street, 4th and Eastern, uh, at the gas station, uh, and then to the Circle, or Circle K. Yeah, this is the gas station. Yeah, the gas station, and then fought to the, then to the Super 8, where, where the guy in the white uh, Jeep Cherokee and him go in, check, check, and uh, check into a room, and then go back out and go into room 120. All right, uh, and they sit there until the police show up, where she then calls his dad, and uh, and he calls a intern calls the police, and the police show up there to 120, knock on the door. And then you come out. So, again, I ask, you told officers that you had an online identity, Jamie. Um, this guy, or uh, Hagen, saying he was talking to you. We got a witness putting you, picking him up at the same time that this message was sent saying, I'm here. So, I, I kind of got to say that Jamie Tilly is you. It's not me. It's not you. It looks like, overall, like the police actually have a pretty comprehensive handle on this situation. They have a detailed map of where Shorty was at any given time, when he picked up this anonymous teenager, and the location that they ended up. This is incredibly good, of course, because it sounds like further exploitation of this child was prevented. Generally, if a person like this is trying to get a child high, they're waiting until they're so inebriated that they can't say no. It doesn't sound like it got to that point. Communicated by phone. Um, there, there was no sexual intentions that night. Okay. Um, you got anything you want to add? So how did you meet? Um, I want to say it was at our coffee shop. Okay. Uh, so, like he just walks in, you guys take up a conversation, become friends. Yeah, that's happened many times. Invite over to your house. Has your wife met him? I think so. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you said he's come to your house several times to play video games. I think just once. Come to your house once to play video games. Uh, and then you guys met at the coffee shop a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's almost absurd that this man is denying that he's the person in question. There is specific information relating to their location and destination in those kick chats. And he's just simply ignoring them let alone the fact that earlier in the interview he actually admitted that the teenager calls him Jamie. It's ridiculous for him to deny at this point, and it's obvious that he thought he could come to the station and talk it out, even though he had no idea the amount of information that the police had already collected on the situation. What if I said that he told you you guys met through a Craigslist ad the very first time that he posted in Casual Encounters? No. Okay. Um, well, the, in this, can, can I add, is, mm -hmm. is he legitimately underage? Yeah. And he was the first time that you met him, and I said, 16. I, I asked him, I said, hey, does he know how old you were? And he said, yeah, he knows, because we had a discussion about it, and at first he was uncomfortable with it, but then he finally got over it. Evidently, it turns out that this John Doe's actual age was 16 years old. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Oklahoma law, the age of consent is actually 16. Which, well, whatever your opinion on that is, it's the law. However, there is also a differential of two years within the law. This means that a 16-year-old can have sexual relations with someone that is two years younger or 18. But it becomes a crime when that person is older than 19. And if you take a look at Senator Ralph Shorty, He's definitely older than 19. This conversation, it says, she needs me to go to the store for her. My three-year-old is sick. That's one of the things I've been dealing with tonight. We're not going to have enough time. Can we get together tomorrow, make, after one? <clears throat> I'll get, I'll get even, I'll get a hotel room or something if that would make it easier. Um, it goes on talking about coffee the coffee shop, shop my coffee shop. Um, I'll be alone in about 10 minutes at my coffee shop. Uh, he says, can I 
help you with anything for spring break. Again, you said just customers, but I'll leave it in here close to eight. Okay. It is absolutely, ridiculously absurd for him to still deny any relations to these texts. The amount of coincidence required would be astronomical for these to be two separate people. It's too obvious that Shorty is grasping at straws here, simply trying to save himself. So here's the deal, bro. You and I both know what the truth is, and the truth is not what you're telling us. We're not saying you're a bad guy. We're not saying you set out thinking that this is some 15-year-old kid you're going to go bang. We're not saying that. We're saying, hell, maybe you didn't know how old he was. I don't know. I think you probably did based on what he's telling me, but things are what they are. Tell us the truth. Get it out there. Let's get this over with. Get this behind us. So we can all move on. Telling you that. No, you're not. You're telling us part of what happened, but you're not telling us what's going on. You told the officers there that you had an online identity of Jamie. He's talking about you, you talk about in these texts when you when this kick account about your kids and your kid being sick and your coffee shop and then you got customers left and then you close it. I mean, it's clearly you. It's clearly. And you. we've got a witness that put you there when you I'll say. I absolutely picked him up. When you say I'm here. The witness is waiting down the street because she thought it was jacked up. She thought it was jacked up that he wouldn't tell her where he was going or anything like that. So she sits down the street and waits. And then she sees him going to the Super 8 Hotel with, with you. And then she gets scared and wondering what the heck's going on. So she calls the police or calls it his dad. And then he in turn and calls us. So here's the deal. <clears throat> we're, we're, we're trying to give you an opportunity, all right? to help yourself out here, all right? We have a electronic, I mean, we have his device, we have, these are just photos of it. We actually have downloaded the entire device now. So we have everything that y'all said that night, everything. The thing about it is that tablet, once you, once you sent the message saying I'm here, that tablet was never on the, never in, on the internet again, so, the kid conversation couldn't delete. So we have the entire conversation. But you could. Okay. Yeah, you can look at it. You have the, we have the entire conversation because it never hit the network again. From what the officers are saying here, it sounds like Shorty tried to delete the conversation that he had with the teenager. But because the tablet didn't connect to the internet again after that, the messages were still there on the app. The Kick app allows you to access your conversations while offline, and because of that, the police were able to pull every single message sent on there. This seems to stop Shorty in his tracks, obviously, but you can't help but feel that he handled this incredibly sloppily. Someone watched him bring the kid into the hotel room. It's absurd that he did things so out in the open like this. This is a bad deal. This is, this is, um... Uh, prostitution of, with a minor, prostitution within a thousand foot of a church, which are both felonies, and then transporting for the purposes of the prostitution, which is a misdemeanor. I'm telling you, that's not me. It clearly is you. That's, that, that, Ralph, that's a lie. You're lying to us right now. That's clearly you. No one else with daughter sick, coffee shop, I'm here and you're there. That's clearly... There were three specific charges laid against Shorty. The first one, soliciting a minor for prostitution. Second of, prostitution within 1,000 feet of a church. And lastly, transportation of someone for prostitution. Despite mentioning first that they had not smoked together, Shorty later said that they had brought marijuana with them and had been smoking it when the police arrived. This is illegal in Oklahoma but it doesn't seem like the officers thought it was worth pursuing a charge for that with everything else that was going on. Something funny I quickly saw, the video from the arrest released by more police shows Shorty in the motel room wearing a t-shirt that read, now go make me a sandwich. It also cites a Bible verse, specifically Ephesians 5.22, which calls on women to obey their husbands. I thought this was kind of ironic considering the number of sins he committed all at once. The amount of evidence left behind is just absolutely overwhelming. Even if he wants to continue denying what happened right now, there's no way that his arguments will get very far in court. It's also unclear why he keeps talking to these officers. They told him at the beginning that he was free to leave, 
and yet he not only continues talking, but does so without a lawyer. This is perhaps the most important time to ever get a lawyer for this man, and he has the money for a good one. He's a senator that just posted $100,000 bail. He's got the money for a decent lawyer. But of course, he chooses to sit here and dig a deeper hole for himself. Hopefully you didn't take a picture with your phone because that's going to tag it whenever you send it to somebody. No, I don't. I don't do that. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't understand why he would do this. I really don't. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said he knows you because, like you're saying, coffee shop, all that. Said you guys smoked weed on the second floor of the coffee shop in the past. He has nothing to gain from this. Except screwing me. How does that help him? I have no idea. Yeah, no, I mean, what's wrong? Why? Why, why would that hurt him? him on probation or whatever? How, he has no idea who you are. He thinks your name is Jamie. Shorty continues to cling to a statement that he has no idea why this John Doe would accuse him of stuff like this and that he had nothing to do with it. The truth of the matter is that even if the John Doe didn't make any accusations like this, they would still have mountains of evidence laid against him that put him at the scene of the crime with a minor. He's groveling, and it's obvious. All I can say, I don't know. How did he know that you were outside? He, he called me, and I told him I was on my way. I told him I'd be there at a certain amount of time, and I got there. Did you did you use this phone that you've lost? That was the only phone I had. Okay. Shorty continues to claim that the only conversations that he had with John Doe were via phone call. But the teenager didn't even own a phone. All he owned was a tablet, which is what he had the app kick on to talk with him. His own story doesn't line up at all with the reality. The conversation that you have there, how, how, how lengthy is it? How long does it go? Is it just one night? Is it more than a week? Is it a month? This one that we have right here is just that night. But we have other other what? Conversations. In what form? Same the same messenger? Huh? The same messenger? I don't know. I'm gonna have to get with we don't we'll have it at I think he said four four this afternoon. So we took his device what we did is we took his device. We took there was two devices. We took them, we forensically <clears throat> uh, we have a guy who forensically examines them. Then what they do is they take everything, everything off of it. Now, if it leads us to another device, if we get a search warrant or a court order or to another account, say, for instance, in this particular thing, uh, <clears throat> this Jamie Tilly. All right, we we will we could we can get the IP address that's used all IP addresses that's used with that account. Right, and we can track that IP address back to a handset. Like so, say for instance, <clears throat> um, this doesn't seem to be a smart move at all on Shorty's account. But he asks whether or not the conversation they have goes back further than that night, almost like he's scared of what else they might find. That, of course, pretty much just gives away that it's him, even disregarding everything else found within the texts. But considering how hard he seems to be trying to convince them that it wasn't him, it probably terrified him to ask. And after that, he remained mostly silent. He definitely knows what he did. There's a few things that have happened to our not-so-friendly senator since. I'll give you a quick update. In September of 2017, a federal grand jury indicted Shorty on four federal sex trafficking and child pornography charges including both this event and videos that he had supposedly distributed from his smartphone between 2012 and 2013. After these charges were announced by the federal government, the Cleveland County District Attorney dropped their own state charges so that it could be pursued federally instead. A federal jury trial had been scheduled for December 2017. On November 19, 2017, Shorty reached an agreement to plead guilty on November 30th to one count of child sex trafficking. The prosecutor agreed to have the child pornography counts removed, 
and Shorty was immediately jailed after pleading guilty on November 30th. He faced a sentence of at least 10 years. Not sure if that was worth it for him. In June of 2018, prosecutors revealed in a sentencing memorandum that Shorty had sex twice with the victim in the year before they were found together at the hotel. They also informed the judge that they would be seeking full restitution, or payment for damages, for the victim's losses and cost of care. Shorty's lawyer said it was not yet appropriate to comment on this. Ralph Shorty was sentenced in Oklahoma City Federal Court to a total of 15 years in prison, along with 10 years of supervised release. In his sentencing testimony, Shorty apologized to his family, fellow Christians, and his constituents. Later on, District Judge DeGiusti imposed a restitution fine on Shorty of $125,850, which was to be paid to the teenage victim. Hopefully, the money would help to heal some of the pain he'd been through having to deal with the trauma from this man. 